Hello everyone, as you can see, I've got my hands on the all new GoPro 9, the latest offering. I'm a big fan of GoPro, so I thought I'd best go out, check this one out and see how it compares and see what kind of cool shots we can get with it. say it's probably about 20% bigger than the GoPro 8 and a little bit heavier. A lot of that weight I think comes from this new screen on the front. Super useful and apparently GoPro says 30% longer battery life which is always good when you're out there on the trails. A few of the other upgrades, it has a much bigger sensor apparently so hopefully that's going to improve with the lower light. It also films in 5k. It's got an all new HyperSmooth 3 which is more powerful than the 8 to make all those trail shots extra smooth, which I'll show you later, it actually makes a huge difference. You can also get a screw on super wide lens, which I haven't got yet, but that's coming soon. And hopefully I'll be able to show you that. But for today, we'll just go out, use it as it is. I'm gonna keep the settings pretty basic just to kind of see how easy it is and how well it can handle straight out the box. Let's go. So I'm on my way to Fleet Pump Track for a little bit of a session. I think um, it's the perfect place to show off some of the GoPro's new features, um, like the horizon mode and the new hypersmooth. But already, this new front screen on the 9 is proving really useful. Um, super easy to set up shots like this if you like doing a bit of talking to the camera. And you can actually see the settings on the front as well, which is really useful because nothing is more annoying than uh, thinking you filmed something really good than realizing you've only taken a photo of yourself or something. So yeah, first impressions of the new screen, great actually. So the GoPro hyperlapse mode is back again, as you can see, it smooths up everything and speeds it up. Only now you can switch from the fast forward back to real time with audio. Like that. So for the first lap around the pump track, I just wanted to show you what hyper smooth ability looks like when it's turned off, as you can see. It's kind of pretty bumpy and uh, even though the pump track is super smooth, it's still rocking around a lot which is what you actually get from a lot of action cameras and yeah, pretty unpleasant actually, not as good to watch. So for the next lap, I tried out hyper smooth on all the way up to boost mode, which is as smooth as it will get. So as you can see, straight away, it's much smoother, much nicer, but it's a bit of a toss up because then you lose the super wide view and you get a bit more handlebars in your face and sometimes the end of the bars go off the screen a little bit, but I still think that looks pretty damn amazing. And that's a great setting for this chest angle. However, if you want the best of both worlds, which I think is my favorite, you can put Hyper Smooth just on, not all the way up to boost, that's a bit of a medium setting, where you get the best of both worlds. So you can see it's still pretty damn smooth, certainly smooth enough. And you also get a bit of a wider angle, you can see the end of the bars. And I, I think that's my favorite, that's the uh, setting I like the most for the chest action. So finally, I decided to try out the new horizon level mode so it keeps the horizon flat. The only problem with that is you can only have it on the linear lens, so it zooms in even more, so you get a lot more sort of stem on this chesty angle. I think in the future, if I had the extra wide lens to screw on, this would be definitely the shot of choice. But still looks pretty cool. So far, so good. So that was cool. Let's head off to uh, Rogate and get some more kind of mountain bikey traily stuff, see how it performs there. So I've just arrived at Rogate, and as you can see, unfortunately, it's quite dark, dingy, and rainy, which is sad, but could be a good test of this camera's new sensor, because I guess a lot of the shots you might be doing is gonna be kind of in dark and dingy woods, which is where these kind of cameras always struggle. So let's go and see, um, see how it can handle it anyway. So I'm just gonna blast down the S&M track quick. It's got a few jumps, a few turns, a few bumps and a really dark section at the bottom so we can really test out the low light stuff here in the woods.
Oh, it's definitely wet and pretty slippy, but good to be back at Rokex. Pretty bumpy. the footage is pretty smooth pretty nice all the way down the track however when it gets into the super dark area which actually is really dark in real life so it's a gopro's worst nightmare it does kind of seem to slow down a bit but considering how dark it is and it's full 4k pretty impressive footage and i think that new big sensor is really helping Good fun. Now I'm going to pop the camera on the top of the helmet for a bit of a head cam and I'm going to use the maximum boost so let's see if it's any good. Just going to roll in from here halfway up because this track's got a few big old bumps and jumps which hopefully can uh, test the stability. Oh we almost started with a crash. So I wasn't actually going to put this clip in because it's pointing completely at the ground and it's pretty terrible but I just thought it demonstrated pretty well the hyper smooth in action. You can see the helmet moving around so much um, whilst kind of everything else is super smooth so you can see exactly how much it's doing which I thought was pretty impressive so I left that shot in just to show you that. So we managed to get a few laps in there but it is actually starting to get pretty rainy which is not good for your clips so I think we're gonna call it there go home and hopefully it stops raining and we'll go to the John Pound later actually before we leave I've just remembered these sick turns that run down the middle here which will be really cool with that horizon lock maybe so I'm just gonna try that out before we go see if it looks cool I do think it is still a little bit too zoomed in on the stem you get a bit too much bar in the shot so I definitely want to try out that new super wide lens when it comes out but even so it still looks pretty cool especially in those last few turns that is slippy. So it's kind of stopped raining, a bit miserable still, but I'm kind of most excited because the MX-5 is back in the game. Bike's on the roof, it's got a new manifold and a few other bits and pieces, so hopefully it doesn't blow up on the way to the jump down. actually got the jump pound it was annoyingly pretty dark but I just did a couple runs um, a few of my favorite super view hyper smooth on settings which you can see looks pretty damn cool I think Normally I like the bars to be in the shot, so I like the chesty run, but if you're following someone, especially a cool jump like this, it doesn't matter so much because they're the main action. There it was. They're my first impressions, my first day with the new GoPro Hero 9. And I must say, very positive. I think it is definitely improvement over the 8. I think I'm going to be using it for making all my videos in the future. Everything was 4K. The quality is amazing. Definitely some tricky shots. It was really dark and dingy, which is 
an action cam's worst nightmare actually, especially patchy light. And I think it did really well. I think it did better than the old camera, which was already the best action camera in my opinion, the Hero 8. So yeah, thumbs up for GoPro. I'd say if you're just buying one camera for making videos and such, this pretty much does it all. I'm definitely going to have to try out that new super wide lens and then try out the horizon leveling once again because I think that is going to be the winning combo. Until then, hope you like my mountain bikers basic review of the GoPro Hero 9. Make sure you subscribe for more and thanks for watching.